dear friends, it's May 31st, 2020. It's Pentecost, a day we often call the birthday of the church. So happy birthday, church. It's Pentecost. Hundreds of years before Jesus' birth, his life, his death, his resurrection and ascension, God promised through the prophets Jeremiah and Ezekiel a new covenant through the giving of the Holy Spirit, which would work for sinful flesh that we were incapable of doing on our own. So it is that God said, for instance, through Ezekiel, he said, I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols I will cleanse you and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone and give from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and my rules. That's Ezekiel 36, 24 to 27. Hallelujah. Jesus himself promised and said that he, the risen Lord Jesus, must first ascend to heaven so that the Father could pour out the Holy Spirit that had been promised. Jesus said in John 16, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. That's John 16, 7. And so after the resurrection, Jesus instructed the disciples not to wait, leave Jerusalem, but to wait. And while staying with them, it says in Acts 1, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So it was exactly 10 days after the ascension of Jesus that there the believers were all together in that upper room in prayer and there was the sound of mighty rushing wind and then there were tongues of fire that rested on every believer's head. So in fact, we're going to be singing in a little bit uh, an invitation of the Holy Spirit to work afresh in our lives. Breathe on me, breath of God. And after a sermon, we're going to sing Consuming Fire. But first, let's pick up the story of that uh, Luke has given of this great and glorious day. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, beginning with the second chapter, the first verse. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in his own native language, Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome. Both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, 
since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 上帝要将佢嘅灵浇灌喺凡有血气嘅。At ang inyong mga anak na lalaki at babae ay mangang huhula. Vossos velhos sonharão. E tu, jovens, terão visiones. Vous saurez que le Seigneur est au milieu de son peuple. Yesu no hoka ni shu wa imasen. Kono kata koso makoto no shu desu. Dao na shi hou, fan chou gao zhu ming de jiu bi de jiu. That everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we pray the prayer, the collect for Pentecost. Almighty God, on this day, through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you revealed the way of eternal life to every race and nation. Pour out this gift anew. That by the preaching of the gospel, your salvation may reach to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, chapter fourteen, verse eight to seventeen. And Philip said to Jesus, Lord. Show us the Father, and it is enough for us. And Jesus said to him, "Have I been with you so long that you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, 'Show me the Father'? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does His works." Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. You know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Let's just pray as we begin this time. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Dear friends, it's a great joy and an honor as part of this uh, Pentecost meditation to focus this time on Acts 2 verses 1 to 21. And the text that I've chosen is actually the very last verse of that section, which is the Apostle Peter boldly proclaiming, uh, and in fact quoting from Joel 2, making it clear that the phenomenon that they were ob observing and seeing was what J Joel spoke about hundreds of years before. And in that, Joel says, And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's Acts 2.21, quoting from Joel 2.32. Situation we're familiar with. Of course, Acts 1, verses 1 to 11, gives the account of, of Jesus for this period of some 40 days, from the day of his resurrection until his ascension, where he met with his followers, his disciples, and prepared them for his ascension, his departing from them. He gave them the Great Commission, which was the, to make disciples of all nations, but he instructed them that they were not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the giving of the Holy Spirit. He said, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so they waited. And Acts 1 verse 14 says that in fact, they were, uh, it says, all these were with one accord, were devoting themselves to prayer. And by Acts 2, it says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Well, I'm aware of the irony of this and the fact that here I am in my kitchen uh, and you are wherever you are. We are taking encouragement today of all days that some of our congregations in Western Canada are able to start to begin to meet some of their people. And we're so thrilled about that. And we see that as the beginning that we pray that all of us in due course would be able to do the same. And, and all of us, that we might be, you know, in our respective churches in one place. But for now, we're not together in one place. But we can certainly be of one accord and in prayer. And I suspect that there is in the hearts of all of us a longing for a mighty working of God, reviving his church, working in us individually and in our congregations and in our diocese and the ACNA, such that we would take our place as part of the body of Christ in this great commission mandate to make the, the Lord Jesus known to all the nations. We need a work of the Holy Spirit more and more one accord in prayer. And so there they were. They were in this upper room, maybe 120 of them. Uh, and it says, And when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven, and then it, on it goes. Well, there are four things that I want, that I think are memorable, that catch my attention, even although I'm familiar with this account. The first one is rushing, roaring wind from heaven. The second one is tongues of fire residing on each head. The third is each one, it says in verse uh, 2, 11, it says, uh, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And so they, as the Holy Spirit gave utterance, they were speaking in other tongues so that others of other nations could hear the mighty works of God. And then fourthly, there's the preaching of Peter which points to Jesus. This is all about Jesus, he wants them to know, so that they might know and, be, and repent and believe in Jesus and be saved. First, the rushing wind. Well, it's no secret that the word spirit and breath and wind, both in Hebrew and Greek, are the same words. And so it is that if God wants to make it really clear that he's doing something with the Spirit of God, the breath of God, the wind of God, then a rushing wind would be a very appropriate thing. And so that's in fact what God did. You see, the thing is, if there's no Holy Spirit, there's no life. 
If there's no Holy Spirit, there's no sprinkling clean that God spoke about through Ezekiel 36. If there's no Holy Spirit, there's still a heart of stone, which is repulsive to God, instead of a heart of flesh, which beats for the things of God. If there's no Holy Spirit, there's no life. And so as the rushing wind came, it speaks about the fact that God had to do a work which only he could do by the Holy Spirit and delivering the ministry of Jesus to the hearts and lives of people like you and me. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You must be born again. You must be born of, of the Holy Spirit or you have no life. P Paul said, for God has done, speaking of the Holy Spirit, weaken by the flesh what, what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Rushing wind, Holy Spirit, working in us, us, the just requirements of the law. And he goes on and says by verse Romans 8, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. The sign of the belonging to Christ is the gift of the Holy Spirit. So rushing wind. Secondly, tongues of fire resting on each one of them. Well, of course, fire speaks of the presence of God. And we think of, for instance, one of the most famous uh, events of the Old Testament, God, Yahweh, confronting Moses in the burning bush. And an angel of the Lord, it says in Exodus 3, appeared to him, that's Moses, in a flame of fire, flame of fire, out of the midst of a bush, he looked and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called out to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not come near, take your sandals off your feet for the place on which you're standing is holy. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Moses understood that the fire spoke of the very presence of God. And what's incredible is that people like you and me, because of what Jesus did, we're actually able to uh, come in contact with and have the fire of God residing within us. Tons of fire residing and on each, not just the apostles, not just the superheroes that we read about in the, in the New Testament, but the everyday ones that we have no idea who they are. In fact, by later, when Peter is quoting from Joel, he speaks about, he says this, he says, in the last days it shall be what God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. Men and women, young and old, rich and poor, whoever they are, if they're in Christ they have the Holy Spirit and he resided on their heads. Hallelujah. Thirdly, it says that, in fact, it says this, uh, at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are you not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each one of us his own native language? And the thing that causes readers, when they get this passage, to have to go through Parthians and Medes and Elamites and so on, this great list. Because they all, they all heard of the mighty works of God in their own tongue as the Holy Spirit gave utterance. Why would the Holy Spirit do this? It was because 
he wanted to make clear that the gospel is for the nations, for all people everywhere. So it is that the writer of, of uh, uh, Isaiah says this, he says, I will make you, speaking of Jesus, as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Hallelujah. And so how amazingly wonderful that on that day when all these nations had crammed into Jerusalem because of the feast, that they got to hear from these individuals in their own tongue the mighty works of God. Fourthly, the preaching of Peter. Well, you remember who Peter is. Peter is the guy who denied Jesus, and now he's filled with the Holy Spirit, and he's boldly speaking. He didn't know whether this was going to get him in trouble, which, of course, it later did. But he spoke boldly, and he made it clear, and he said, first of all, that this, what you hear and see going on, is exactly what, and he quotes from Joel too, what the Old Testament spoke about. And he said, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And he goes on and speaks about that and makes it clear that in fact what Joel was speaking about and what all was speaking was preparing for the coming of Jesus. And so by verse 33, which we didn't read, but I'm going to say to you, verse 32, this Jesus God raised up, and of that we are witnesses, Peter says, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father this promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. And he's saying right now before your very eyes. Peter speaks today, doesn't he, to us. The roaring wind, the tongues of fire, everyone hearing the, of the mighty works of God in their own tongue. And then Peter pointing to this Jesus, because it's all about Jesus. It's all about what he did, which is now making the Holy Spirit able to reside in the likes of sinful flesh because he sprinkles us clean and takes us as his own forever, for all eternity. that all, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord may be saved. So first of all, I want to say, what about you? Have you called on the name of the Lord? I know that chances are good if you're watching this video, you may know quite a bit and maybe, maybe everyone has, but there might be somebody who got roped in and so I invite you to call on the name of the Lord Jesus and he will come and make you clean and the Holy Spirit will come and reside in your life forever. Are you saved? Have you called on the name of the Lord? And if you have called on the name of the Lord, are you growing in the Lord? Are you growing? As 2 Corinthians 3 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed from one degree of glory to another, just as from the Lord the Spirit. Are you being changed from one degree of glory by the Holy Spirit? Are you allowing Him to confront you with Jesus? And then as we think about Acts 1.8, the, the call of the but you shall be written, uh, you shall receive the Holy Spirit, um, it says in Acts 1a, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. The giving of the Holy Spirit is primarily given to equip you, friend, to be a witness, to open your mouth and speak to people about Jesus. What about you? Let's pray that God the Holy Spirit would be free to work in each of us and in our respective congregations and in our diocese, the Holy Spirit would come in mighty power and do a glorious work for the salvation of the nations. Oh God, we love you. We thank you that you're faithful, that you always keep your promises. And we thank you that on that great and glorious day, just as Jesus had promised, just as the promise of prophets of old had spoken, you poured out your Holy Spirit. 
And we thank you that he continues to come and take residence in the lives of boys and girls and men and women as they put their trust in this same Jesus who died and rose again and ascended to heaven. And so we invite you, Lord, maybe there's someone who's calling out right now. Would you hear their cry and come and take residence in their life? And Lord, you know our desire to grow in you and to be changed from one degree of glory and to be the fruit of the Spirit, to be able to be manifested and for there to be a ministry coming out of our lives. And Lord, make us witnesses to you, we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. as we conclude this DAS and Pentecost celebration. Here I am, still in our kitchen, 
longing for that day when we can be together. And I know some of our congregations this very day are beginning to be able to have some services, particularly out west in Canada, for which we're so grateful. And it bring, gives us hope for the rest of us in the days ahead. But in the meantime, is it not wonderful that we serve a wonderful Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Father who sent the Son into the world to live and to die and to rise again and to ascend to heaven. And the Holy Spirit has been poured out on men and women, boys and girls of all nations as they put their trust in Jesus. Alleluia. And so it's my joy to bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.